So the life of Abraham is such a pivotal foundation for the whole rest of the story of the Bible. And today we get to dive in as, as God has been calling Abraham, promising him to, to make him into this great instrument to uh, ratify this covenant with him. And now he gives him the sign of circumcision. And we can ask, well, why? Why is that the sign? Uh, we're going to talk about that today. Genesis 17, 1 through 14. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me and be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on his face and God said to him, But me, my covenant is with you. You will be my ancestor, uh, the ancestor of many nations. And because I have made you the ancestor of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you and kings will come from you. I will set up my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation as an enduring covenant. I will be your God and your descendants God after you. I will give you and your descendants in the land in which you are immigrants, the whole land of Canaan as an enduring possession, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants in every generation. This is my covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Circumcise every male. You must circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it will be a symbol of the covenant between us. On the eighth day after birth, every male in every generation must be circumcised, including those who are not your own children, those born in your household and those purchased with silver from foreigners. Be sure you circumcise those born in your household and those purchased with your silver. Your flesh will embody my covenant as an enduring covenant. Any uncircumcised male whose flesh of his foreskin remains uncircumcised will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Um, okay, there's some fascinating things going on in this passage. It's a, a again, we're, we're going through the story of Abraham because he is such a foundational figure. It really sets up the whole rest of the Hebrew Bible and God's relationship with Israel. But here we have this really pivotal moment where God actually um, establishes this sign of circumcision. And but before we get to that, uh, one of the things that jumped out at me as I was reading this passage, remember back to chapter 12, chapter 15, God is establishing this covenant with Abraham. And there we saw that God promised to make out of Abraham a nation, the nation of Israel, uh, to be a blessing to the whole world. But here he actually takes it to a new level. Uh, if you notice, it's not just the ancestor of the nation of Israel, it's in the plural. I will make you an, the ancestor of many nations. Many nations, plural, kings, will come from you. So that repetition there, it's really interesting. It's the first time we see God kind of expanding the vision even beyond the nation of Israel. Somehow, through Abraham, God wants to actually make him the ancestor of multiple nations. Uh, I think we see glimpses of that in the Old Testament, but really that points us all the way forward into the New Testament, where God's people become a people of every tribe, tongue, nation, and language. It's this uh, multi-ethnic diverse vision that comes from God's promise with Abraham. And so God gives him this new name, Abraham, uh, which means father of nations. Uh, and so here, it's a valid question. Uh, a lot of people have asked, why circumcision? Why is this the sign? Why is this the symbol that God gives to Abraham? This painful um, surgery that every male in Israel uh, has to do. And, you know, I did, did a deep dive into this, looked at the context back several chapters. Many others have written about this as well. But I think there's actually two main reasons we could we could talk about for why why was circumcision of, uh, an important symbol. One is kind of a negative, almost judgment aspect to it. We just saw last chapter, chapter 16, where Abraham and Sarah take matters into their own hands and they oppress their Egyptian slave, right? And the way they oppress is specifically by using her as an object. Abraham goes in, has sex with her, and it, be it causes this strife. The, ch the child that's born from her, Ishmael, it causes tension, strife, and it actually, back in chapter 16, they uh, afflict and harass this, this Hagar. Uh, and so it's fitting then, it makes sense why the very next thing, God's, God's reaffirming his covenant with Abraham, and the one thing he asks him to do is to cut off part of his body in the very place where he used to oppress this Egyptian slave, he now has to offer that uh, to the Lord. It's this painful process, but maybe there's a, a way of saying, hey, you really shouldn't have done that. The other aspect on a more positive 
promise side, it's specifically because the promise is that I'm going to make you uh, these numerous descendants, right? Chapter 15, you're going to be like the stars in the sky. And, and the promise is specifically for his descendants. And so God actually has him offer that part of his body over to the Lord. The promise is for an everlasting uh, nation and people group to come out of him. And so it makes sense then why all Israelite males um, cut off the force, their foreskin in circumcision because that links directly with the promise of descendants. So, yeah, there's kind of a two, two levels there, a positive and a negative aspect to why circumcision is so valuable. One last thing that I want to point out uh, today is the way that this is actually a, a, an incredible symbol of grace. Uh, it, it actually says once and for all, this, this promise that God makes to Abraham is not just by blood. It's not by human will. Uh, it's by God's promise and God's promise alone. It is a symbol of grace. Circumcision, circumcision is all about grace. Uh, because here, it says it's not just the children that are born uh, in your household. It's also all the foreigners, your slaves, uh, the foreigners that bind themselves to Israel. From here on, the circumcision becomes an entry point that says anyone uh, born of blood or coming in from, an out, from the outside can actually become a part of the family of Abraham. Anyone can uh, join into the promises that God is giving to Abraham through circumcision. And so circumcision as a symbol of grace is the way your entry point has nothing to do with your lineage. Uh, your entry point, actually, you can bind yourself to Israel to these promises by, by circumcision. It's a symbol of grace from here. And, and God has been, always been dealing with his people uh, by grace and grace alone. And so you actually see right at the beginning and throughout the story, foreigners coming in to the promises of Abraham from the very beginning. Uh, and it, and it kind of settles in on this image of circumcision and uncircumcision because circumcision is about the promise. It's not by human will. It's not by blood lineage, but it's this promise that God has made to make it Abraham the father of many nations. Well, hopefully that gave you uh, some food for thought to, to really mull over why circumcision. And, and I want to just offer maybe a, an ongoing question. Uh, and I would love to get some feedback. A ask your questions. Email me. Let's start a conversation. But uh, I said uh, really clearly in the Old Testament, and especially from here in chapter 17, that circumcision was a symbol of grace. It's the way that God is saying, you're not earning this. Uh, it's not by blood. You can't be born into the, the promised family, but by circumcision, anyone, foreigner or uh, native born, can be grafted into the promises of Abraham. So it's a symbol of grace. However, when you flip over to the New Testament, especially books like Galatians, for example, Paul makes it really clear that because of what Jesus has done, circumcision has now become an act of works. If I force circumcision on a Gentile uh, after Jesus has died and risen from the dead, that circumcision that in chapter 17 of Genesis was a symbol of grace it will now become a symbol of works. Uh, maybe that throws things up in the air. I don't know. Uh, I would love to have some, hear some thoughts, some feedback. What do you think about that? How did, how did that symbol change from grace to works because of what Jesus did on the cross? <laughs>